Our next speaker is, Bill has already referred to, Don Francis. Uh, Don also was an EIS officer. He was in the surveillance of uh, smallpox in West Africa, uh, and in India. He uh, tramped around in southern Sudan looking for Ebola virus and found it. Uh, came back to CDC, got involved in hepatitis and HIV. Uh, moved on into uh, vaccine trials, but he's probably best remembered as being the hero of And the Band Played On. And I was the villain. <laughs> David, you're always the villain and never the villain. It's hard to follow Bill Fagey, but what I really want to do is really cast the shadow of Bill Fagey and, and D.A. Henderson of how we move this idea into a field operation in times that were extremely difficult. And I want to start with some just introductory pieces of what it's like now that I've been back to uh, India working on polio um, and um, to see the differences. These are just some of the uh, letters that I sent back and stole from my ex-girlfriend so she couldn't use them. Um, and if, if for those of you who don't know a lettergram, this is how we communicated in those days, <laughs> that you had a letter and you folded it up and then you sent it off and two weeks later they would get it in the United States and then two weeks later the response would come uh, and that was the communications we had with the outside world. When I wanted to call Bill Fagey and in uh, Delhi from Lucknow, I would come in in the morning and I could sit there and do my work and dial the telephone over and over again and still do my work because it took about 50 dials before I could finally get connected to, uh, uh, to Delhi and then it would probably get interrupted uh, uh, after that. But it was uh, a very different time when you were very isolated in the world and yet you depended on this team around you that would go out and come back again like breathing and would give you the oxygen to survive. Uh, a remarkable a time and a remarkable effort and you have to uh, think about Bill Fagey thinking, uh, getting the scientific um, uh, approach to search and containment and then D.A. Henderson putting this thing together and uh, having to be in Geneva uh, dealing with all the issues that D.A. had to deal with and us complaining in the field why we didn't have vehicles. DA, I apologize to you for that because it's amazing what uh, was accomplished at the international level. And uh, as all of us who have gone back and worked with WHO since, you only learn once in WHO in those days to say, well, in smallpox we did it that way. And immediately you got slapped across the face and said, you never did things right in smallpox. Don't ever bring it up again. <laughs> so what I'd like to do is to uh, go through very briefly for those who uh, are not familiar with the, with the disease in general, talk about the strategy uh, of smallpox eradication and then move into Uttar Pradesh or UP as you've heard the state called in northern India to give you some idea of what a state in northern India is like, um, what our initial plans were and then that first horrible six months, the next horrible uh, months after that as we naively uh, dove into this thing thinking it would be like uh, um, um, uh, our experience in Africa. And then to kind of analyze why we uh, uh, were failing and um, then how we tightened the screws uh, on a program that we knew would work uh, but ultimately um, had to uh, change the strategy working in a place like northern India uh, which was essentially documentation beat them up documentation, push and repeat over and over again. And then leading to the success of the program and then ending up with um, uh, showing the, at least some of the feelings of the people and that really allowed this to happen. Uh, the essentials of success of this program were really well worked out with good concept, good tools and thanks to DA and others, the financial support uh, and, and uh, on CDC with Dave to get the thing going. And then when we, when my job here is to talk about the local, uh, local issues of how government commitment and action and how to translate this good idea, well-financed program to a, uh, to a successful end. The epidemiology. If you look at this, the epidemiology of smallpox was well understood. The family clusters, the transmission um, of, of the disease, uh, and how to approach it. 
since the epidemiology is well understood, then we can take that science into programs and then come up with a strategy. This is the strategy of a market search. You show a picture of smallpox, wonderful. You don't have to worry about a lab assay diagnosis. Everyone can diagnose say, a case of smallpox in uh, northern India. You just go around and showing a picture uh, in a market like this and say where there's an outbreak. You go find the outbreak and uh, you have an excellent vaccine you can use to, uh, uh, to prevent the disease with essentially 100% success on a single dose. And the, and to, uh, uh, with, that is freeze-dried and easy to use in the field, and then the remarkable bifurcated needle that Bill already talked about that would administer the vaccine easily, um, and so you could use very small uh, volumes of vaccine and yet have 100% uh, take rates. So we had, the, in, in terms of going down the slide to the bottom, we had the concept of tools, the financial support, and then we had some government commitments. Certainly at central government in India, uh, with people like M.I.D. Sharma at the Dutta, it was really a remarkable success that really came down. And if you ask the history of this, was D.A. waiting. When I was uh, uh, recruited into the program, I talked to D.A. and Bill, where to go? And uh, they said, well, gee, the problem's in India. And, and, and D.A. said, well, we're going to wait on India. Uh, until we can get them in a political situation that was uh, ripe where we could all uh, descend on it. And so he sent me off to uh, 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 Sudan and everyone else elsewhere, and then we ultimately came down. So the, the strategy then came to the central government in India, that the commitment was there from the central government, and then our job was to get it done out in the state and local area. So I, I just mentioned that early in the program I was um, um, in Sudan and then transferred to uh, uh, to Borelli in uh, Western UP, and then ultimately the state program coordinator in Lucknow. Now let's talk about UP. This is the, the data um, at that time, uh, and it has increased. This is, a, this is a, a country of 83 million people, uh, or 88 million people divided into primary health centers uh, uh, where the actual work was done with 875 primary health centers. Um, and this is the organizational chart of the primary health center with the doc at the top, and then uh, especially on the lower right is the smallpox supervisor, uh, health inspectors, and family planning people, of which we captured by the end essentially everyone into the smallpox eradication program. The staff was considerable. This is a huge area, but if you look at the number of, of vaccinators, we had literally thousands of people to put to work uh, in this program, and uh, the question was how to uh, uh, since smallpox had been there forever and these staff existed and it continued to uh, uh, be there, how to organize them in a way complement with international staff so that it would work. So with all that uh, together, we just kind of danced in and said, let's eradicate smallpox and, and Bill uh, had his flag and we skipped down the, uh, the uh, grammar school aisle saying, uh, let's get 10 people, put them together, we'll find all the outbreaks and we'll vaccinate all the contacts. It happened in West Africa, let's just go do it, no problem, straight away, uh, let's move ahead. And I'm sorry this is a bit out of focus, but this was the uh, uh, 10, we divided UP into 10 um, uh, areas and we sent uh, 10 people out there um, to uh, do this. And it, that's on the right hand side of this is 3 October uh, when we had all our meetings. Now let me just take a brief moment here just to talk, uh, where's Billy Griggs? Billy's not here. What she, that he's so lucky. I bet he's just not raising his hand. Um, I was uh, in Sudan, and uh, I had ordered a, since you couldn't get gasoline fuel there, I ordered a diesel Mercedes, uh, interestingly stripped down, including not having an air conditioner, uh, which I still wonder why I uh, followed my predecessor's advice. He was a Bengali. He said, you don't need an air conditioner in Khartoum. Or <laughs> um, so I ordered this uh, diesel Mercedes and have it shipped to Khartoum and realized there's no road from the port of Khartoum to the, uh, I'm to the port of Sudan to Khartoum. And so I was kind of uh, anxious about this, but they said, go ahead and order it, and it'll eventually come in months and months. I had found, by the way, 11 Land Rovers in that port um, uh, sitting there rusting and uh, captured them all for the smallpox program and just drove them across the desert with 11 drivers. But so that when I, the word was that I was going to be transferred to India, I stopped this car uh, being shipped because I would never see it again. It would uh, disappear somewhere in East Africa. And so I had it in Europe. And so when I was then the transfer was made from, uh, from uh, Khartoum to New Delhi, uh, I called our 
however, I got the whole of uh, CDC and said, it's cheaper, it's much cheaper, I'll just leave my car there, sh ship my car to India, and then uh, um, I'll have a car when I arrive there. And then I got the word that um, your orders are from Khartoum to New Delhi. We'd be happy to ship the car from Khartoum to New Delhi, but they're not from Stuttgart to New Delhi. So my father was living in England at the time, and um, I said, uh, Sai, we have to uh, drive to India. Uh, this, 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 I sent him one of these little lettergrams, and he sent back one fastest return. Uh, no way am I going to drive to you with India. Um, but then I sent back and begged him, and, and my what's almost 70-year-old father joined with me in 13 driving days and one day of rest. We arrived in time for this meeting on 3rd of October. Unfortunately, um, uh, he um, didn't get into India because he was living in London at the time and they said you don't need a visa because you don't if you came in by air and who the hell would a 70 year old man come in by road. So he, <laughs> he came to the border with me and, and I got in with my WHO passport and he had to go back to Lahore and fly in and uh, um, uh, his experience in India was not quite as good as, uh, as ours. So anyway, those are background stories. Um, so. We, we start off, we, we, set, we had that, uh, all of these meetings, to go back on that slide, had all these meetings, we had the strategy set, we'd search out all these coast cases, these 10 epidemiologists mixed uh, national and international would go out and uh, take care of these outbreaks and uh, it will uh, take care of itself. And the, the bottom line was, seek and ye shall find. And as um, uh, was previously mentioned by Bill, these 10 epidemiologists now had 1,525 outbreaks that were supposed to go out and uh, vaccinate on the bottom there. I was in charge of Borelli District and I had 563 outbreaks that I was supposed to go out with, with the local staff and uh, vaccinate. It was not an easy time and it got worse. If you look at the, uh, the initial 1,525 outbreaks, many of them were dead, um, uh, and, uh, and so it went down by itself, essentially, because we certainly didn't get out there and vaccinate. Uh, so we, uh, we had uh, an UP 500 outbreaks, and then, as Bill said, this uh, transmission season starts coming uh, at the, in the dry, hot season starts March and April with 1,700 and, and, and um, 79 outbreaks. Um, and um, during the dry, uh, dry season, the transmission increases, and so no matter how good your vaccination is, it's extremely hard to stop this disease, and it is god-awful. This is my team um, uh, in uh, UP in, I think, April or May, and it is about 120 degrees. We found this little tree to try to eat with. You can see the background of this is the dust of UP, trying to find these villages and to survive out there. Uh, this was a different time. I've been working on uh, um, uh, the polio work in uh, actually in the same bloody villages in UP and Bihar uh, recently. And there, you're out in your air-conditioned Toyota now, and you have your cell phone to call home. It is a very different uh, situation today than it was then. But then when you have to step out, you still have this heat, dust, and misery. And in June of 1974 now, we have 1,905 outbreaks in UP. Um, and then after the heat disappears, you get the rains. And there actually is an assistance in the rains and an, an, an inhibition in the rains. The assistance was it decreases transmission, so we're down to 1,479 outbreaks. The problem is trying to get to these villages through the mud and the yuck uh, and your, uh, your vehicle getting stuck and the like is extremely uh, uh, challenging. So why did we have all these problems? Uh, in some ways, unexpected. And uh, uh, Bill says, just march forward, it'll, get, it'll go away. And we actually had the history of marching forward and we'd go away. So we really looked at it. Were, was, were we failing to, uh, was it really failure to vac of the vaccine or failure to vaccinate? And clearly, every time we evaluated these outbreaks, there was nothing wrong with the vaccine. There was nothing wrong with the idea. It's just that the system didn't work. And so we looked at it in a, in a really more of an administrative sense that um, there was a functional parts of the area that were eradicating smallpox, including the whole country of India, but certainly in any local area. And then there was an incredibly dysfunctional group uh, of these 875 primary health centers. They clearly need to be pulled up so that when there was an outbreak, it was appropriately taken care of and didn't, uh, um, and didn't uh, continue. 
And well, this is a slide I showed you before, and I skipped through it very quickly. But if you look at the lines of this slide, you can kind of understand the administrative structure of some of these primary health centers. There are various people with various powers and various interests. Um, a sanitary inspector was the one who inspected the food markets and such and had a total private practice on his own. The, the primary health center doc, getting very little money, essentially was private practicing alone, and the structure was just all fluid and everyone was doing their own thing. And the question was how to get that together so that it would ultimately work. Because if it didn't work down at the local level, uh, you couldn't get the, uh, the staff you needed to actually eliminate the disease. So it was an incredibly discouraging time. And this is a... Um, uh, a note that I write uh, in my, after a six-month evaluation to Nicole Grasse uh, and to Bill in Delhi. And it, it reads, and closes a copy of my six-month appraisal. It is not optimistic. The number of cases here remains high. The number of outbreaks continues to rise. Does, you, does the UP government truly want to eradicate smallpox? I think we are risking the success of the program by being patient with the UP government. I think it is time to confront it with action, for action. And indeed, we did. But the reward for complaining at this point out in Borelli was that I was promoted <laughs> to state coordinator now, a little bit further from New Delhi and out into the bush in Lucknow. And what we really did was just tighten the administrative truths, do, uh, screws, document the successes and failures, redocument and over document it by, by uh, um, uh, paper that I'll show you in a second, and then we had an army of international and national consultants to document the documenters. Uh, and and if, for any of you who have worked in India, you can understand this, that it's, it is the paper trail that makes it work. Um, and this is the paper trail. We, have the, we made the worker schedules, we made the, uh, the case finding, and then we, we even got to the point of designing these um, entire booklets for every outbreak that had all listings and pages to be torn out and ones to stay. And then the next one was the, 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 the supervisors of those outbreaks and what they did so that everything was documented, every step of the way was documented, and you could see who had responsibility. So we took this chaotic PHC system and actually made it into a structure where you, you had uh, a... Uh, uh, a chain of administrative uh, responsibility that you could follow and therefore ultimately they, they were forced to either do their job or suffer uh, the consequences of us complaining to them. Bill described um, this evolution. This is um, a high-tech system we use to, uh, uh, to show the outbreaks. This is Uttar Pradesh, each of those dots being an active outbreak in uh, in July of 74, uh, in August of 74, uh, September of 74, and, 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 and um, just for fun's sake, with Mary Guinan in the audience, uh, this carry uh, area up at the Nepal border, just remember that and you'll see a little bit later. Uh, poor Mary. Um, <laughs> And then my February of 75, it really starts coming down to, again, Mary's area. Um, and this is what it looks like numerically. Bill had, uh, had described this, but you see this. Uh, our, our naive arrival, and we were going to eradicate it this very discouraging time here with the peak. And then as we tighten the screws, we had this continued decline in the number of outbreaks um, over the next, uh, uh, really from uh, June to April of the, next, of the next year. And what kept us going? First, the villages of India. For those who haven't been there, they're absolutely marvelous. They're farmers. They believe in prevention. They will, they will accept any reasonable approach there. They were cooperative, wonderful, um, and uh, I delight to work with. Uh, and every time you go, you're still surrounded by a thousand kids smiling and uh, 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 really helping uh, our workers to get the job done. And then there is uh, our leaders. Um, <laughs> For those in the back who can't recognize this person, he was the previous speaker who... Um, um, and, uh, uh, but Bill and DA and, uh, and uh, Mahindra Dutta and the, and the Indian leaders was a wonderful group of people who maybe we were somewhat naive, um, um, but it uh, allowed us to have the uh, spirit and the... Uh, uh, I, I, when I think about complaining to Tony Scardaccio, I didn't have any air horns for my, my, my car, and I kept 
having all these rickshaws I had to get out and bullet carts I had to get out of the way. Next thing I know, I would have air horns uh, shipped in from Geneva. And the field staff. This is actually Mary Guinan in her house, uh, picking up in the, in the morning. She was out in, the, in, a, in a lovely area uh, where she needed elephants to, uh, uh, to move about. Uh, and the actual story of the elephant is more complicated because getting there, you had to drive through this river and they had these like slalom poles stuck in the, in the water, so you're supposed to drive your vehicle through this thing because you couldn't see where the road was. It was underwater. And so uh, uh, the vehicle, that, uh, I think it was Mary's vehicle, that actually didn't quite stay between the slalom poles and uh, dove into the river and took care of one Toyota. And uh, so that's how I think she had to drive with elephants from then on. And then there, there was incredible Indian staff. This was my... Uh, 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 paramedical assistant Rajinder Singh, who was an absolutely golden person, as there were so many of them in India, from the medical to the non-medical professionals. And if we look a little sloppy here, it's because we were praying that smallpox would be eradicated and we just got out of the Ganges River uh, taking a uh, dip. So because of these incredible efforts of, uh, of many, many people, um, and this is the report from 19th of April, 1975, of our uh, weekly report of cases, and you probably can't see it at the bottom, so I highlighted it that uh, we had none. Thank you very much.